It's Chris with Acting Creative, and this is a handwoven experience, episode 59. So you're weaving along, and things are going great, except all of a sudden, you are out of weft yarn. Your bobbin is completely empty. Now, of course, you can manually wind a bobbin, that is no problem. But if you haven't already tried one, I highly recommend a bobbin winder. It can be a game changer. So let me show you mine. I have a shacked manual bobbin winder. Pretty straightforward. I've got this little piece here that spins like this, which turns this piece, this is where your bobbin will go, and it has a nice little kind of clamp feature here to attach it to a work surface. It's pretty nifty. So let me show you the actual process for winding a bobbin using one of these. All right. First of all, I'm gonna tilt you just a little bit so you can see. There we go. All right. So I like to just use my weaving bench. It's right here. I could go find a table, of course, but it seems to be pretty convenient that I can just attach it right here, wind my bobbin, and get back to it. So like I mentioned, the bobbin winder has a place down here where you can clamp. It has like a textured surface here. Um, so what I like to do is use some kind of a soft cloth just to protect the wood from that kind of grippy part. So I'm gonna slide it on here onto my bench, spin this around and give this a tighten. Come on, it helps if you talk to it. All right. That is nice and tight then. Let me turn this so you can see it. So that's how it attaches to any kind of work surface, any table, anything you've got. So I'm gonna pop out my bobbin here. It's gonna slide on just like that. Find my yarn, this is the color I'm gonna use. Now you'll notice that my uh, tube started out as a half pound, but I'm probably more than halfway done with it at this point. So it's gonna wobble around a lot. Here's kind of my solution. Find some way to stabilize your cone or tube of yarn. I have this big old cylinder. I don't remember where I found it or if there was actually yarn on it at one point, but I've used it forever. It's very heavy duty. It's not gonna tip over. So I like to put this on the ground, drop my tube of yarn in there, and then it's not gonna wiggle all over the place. And I'm not constantly picking it up. So I'm gonna put that right below. Start with my yarn there. Do a little, you just wanna kinda of catch the end of the yarn there on the bobbin. And then, see if I can do it with all my sleeve in the way there. I'm gonna kind of start to wind it. There we go. Round and around. You wanna just make sure that you don't end up with the yarn jumping over one of the ends. You wanna keep it in this kind of contained area there. That's where it's gonna do the most good for you. And I don't have any kind of real trick here. You just keep winding it on. Once you get to a point where you're happy with how much you have on there, let me find my scissors, give it a snap, take it off, back into your shuttle, through the little slat, and voila, you are ready to go back at your project. So if you haven't tried a bobbin winder yet, I highly recommend it. If you um, use a boat shuttle with any kind of consistency, it is worth it to, uh, to find yourself a manual bobbin winder because it'll keep you weaving much faster than if you're trying to wind it manually. So, all right, my friends, check out those bobbin winders, would you, huh? Have a great week and happy weaving.